This is a Rodke Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rodke of Rodke Mods, and in this episode I will be showing you how to install Mac OS Sierra on your unsupported Mac. Now, we have a great guy named DosDude1, which also has a YouTube channel. You can click this link right here, where you can go to his channel and thank him personally. DosDude has created a patcher tool for the Mac OS installer to install it on most unsupported Macs that were supported in El Capitan. So far, the 2007 MacBook Pro and the, I think it's the mid-2007, iMac are not supported, nor are any of the 32-bit EFI Macs. But all hope isn't lost yet. They are currently trying to figure out how to make them work because Mac OS Sierra requires SSE 4.1, which older systems do not have, including the ones that I just stated. But still, they are working on a workaround, and there's still hope that there will be an, a hack to enable those Macs to eventually install Sierra 2. Also, the 2007 iMac is also compatible as long as you take it apart and swap the CPU out for a newer one, which supports SSE 4.1. Still, here are the systems that are unsupported that actually work fine with Mac OS Sierra. The reason why we all think Mac OS Sierra was dropped for support was because of a outdated USB controller that Apple had decided to stop supporting. Early installs at El Capitan had many issues with, for instance, my MacBook 5.1 didn't have a eyesight camera for the first two or three updates of El Capitan, and the USB plugs were running at 1.1 speeds instead of 2.0. So, needless to say, there was a lot of USB issues, and apparently we think Apple had just had enough and dropped support. Plus, they wanted, I believe, to enhance the system by enabling SSE 4.1, which, in fact, really isn't needed for much of anything yet. So, I don't know why they did that. Anyway, all the systems that were shown right here will work fine with Mac OS Sierra, except for a few handfuls of things. First off, some of them will not have Wi-Fi, because their Wi-Fi texts have been dropped from Mac OS Sierra. But about half of them will have Wi-Fi, because their similar Wi-Fi boards to supported Macs that are just slightly newer. Also, if you swap out your Wi-Fi modules, you will also be able to have Wi-Fi, as long as you, of course, swap them out for a newer supported Wi-Fi module. You may also have other possible problems. For instance, everything on my MacBook 5.2 works great, except for my trackpad, which even though it works, you can't set it up, so you can't have secondary click, and even tap to click, which was a deal breaker for me currently, but hopefully someone will come out with a way to fix that. Also, there can be other problems that, um, unless you're using a MacBook, for instance, are easily alleviated in desktops. So, to get started, we will need to go to DosDude1's Sierra Patch website, which is right here. I will put a link to it in the description. After we do that, you will have to go to his Things You'll Need section, and if you need the installer, you can download it here for Mac OS Sierra, and then you'll need his tool, which you can download right here, and after all is said and done, and you have everything installed, each time you need an update, you can download this tool right here, which will help you run updates without bricking your Mac. Now that we have these downloaded, we now need a at least 8 gigabyte flash drive formatted in journal file format, which I am currently formatting right now. Now that it is formatted, we can open up his macOS Sierra Patcher program. 
we will need to choose our flash drive name. You want to make sure that you are actually choosing your flash drive, otherwise you may delete something you don't want to delete. We'll then click to browse and find our installer, which I have on my desktop. We click and open it. And now we start the operation. We click yes. We type in our password and hit enter. And it starts putting the image onto the flash drive. Once this is finished, I will come back. It has now completed. We can eject our drives. And we can remove our flash drive. And now we can go to our Mac that we are installing on. For instance, my MacBook 5,2 and we can start installing. All right, now we can put our flash drive into our Mac we want to install Sierra on. And then we can turn it on and hold in the option key. And let it go into the boot menu. Here we can choose the flash drive. If you have an operating system like El Capitan on your drive. Also, you'll see your Mac drive and possibly your Windows drive, but I wouldn't recommend doing this if you have a boot camp drive. Anyway, we choose our flash drive and hit enter. And it loads up like a normal OS X installer. Now that the installer has loaded, we can go to Utilities and go to Disk Utility. Here we can partition our disk any way we want. For instance, let's say I have El Capitan installed, which I don't, but this is just an example. Let's say I have it installed on here. We can choose our main drive and click Partition and make it whatever size we want by just hitting the plus button down here and choosing whatever size we want. Let's say I want to have it half and half. I don't have to do anything. But let's say I want the Sierra partition to be much bigger and just have El Capitan as a backup. I can do this. We make sure it's in Journaled and we click Apply. And it partitions. And now we have a new partition we can click out of Disk Utility and install like any other OS install. Now, if you want to put a fresh install of this on, you can just have a completely wiped drive. Though I would recommend having El Capitan on your system. It's not needed. And in fact, it may be easier for you and it would not mess up your boot camp. But then you always have to be carrying around your installer drive to fix the install after every update. And if you don't have that with you, you won't have an OS to fall back on like OS X El Capitan or whatnot. Anyway, we can click continue, agree to everything. We choose the partition we just partitioned. We click continue and it starts installing. Once this is finished, I will come back. Once the installer is complete, it will attempt to boot into the new OS, and it will fail. To fix this, we need to restart the Mac, hold in our option key, and boot back into the installer drive. Once the installer is back up, we need to go back to Utilities. And here we need to go to Mac OS Post Install. We open that up. And here we can choose our Mac model and whatnot. It will automatically detect what your Mac is. And if it's incorrect, you'll 
you have to select the Mac that your Mac is. In this case, it's right. It is a MacBook 5, 2. We choose that. Then we need to check whatever we want to check. Most of this stuff isn't needed, but I would recommend doing the recovery partition patch so you can use your recovery partition. Then we select the volume that it was installed on. It would have been untitled because I didn't name it. We choose that and we click patch. It patches and now we click reboot. It rebuilds the caches and it will reboot the Mac. It starts booting into Mac OS Sierra. Now we can set it up like any old OS X setup. We click continue, choose our keyboard, connect to our Wi-Fi, which I'm skipping. And here we can actually transfer our information from El Capitan's partition or whatever. But from my experience, it doesn't seem to work in setup. Though you can do it with Migration Assistant after you finish installing and it will work. Just let it calculate all the data for the backup size before you click Next to do that. I will just be setting this up as a regular Mac. And it sets up. And we are up. There's the proof. MacBook 5, comma 2. Now other than the trackpad not working correctly and not having a secondary click, which I can show you, it not working. If we would click trackpad, it would start searching for a Bluetooth trackpad, which in this case I actually had one synced to it. So it will already detect it, which is up here on my Mac Pro right now. But there is no option for the MacBook's trackpad. Anyway. Let's get the volume up here, and we'll talk to Siri real quick. Hi, Siri. How can I help you this afternoon? Oh, I just wanted to say hi. I don't understand. Oh, I just wanted to say hi. But I could search the web for it. Yep, that's Siri. Anyway. I would like to once again thank DosDude1 for this incredible tool. He has already done a similar video to this, but I decided to do one myself to show it also because the GM was recently released, which is basically the release version, usually. So technically, the release has already been out, even though it hasn't been out yet. And this will work with the release copy. So I thought I would just do this video on the official release instead of the betas. Once again, thank you, DOS Dude one You are an incredible guy. And thank you, everybody who has been watching, for watching this. Anyway, that is the end of the video, and this has been a Rutke Mods video. Well, then also click to browse and find our installer, which I have it on my desktop, and click open. We click yes, we type in our password, it doesn't type, and we can remove our flash drive, which won't eject, and we'll talk to Siri real quick. After I connect to the internet.